with I write on them. And today I'm doing a talk about steampunk. So a little bit about me as I write um, uh, Victorian mysteries, steampunk and fantasy, and that's some of my books that I've written. And you say before, um, oh, I don't actually have it on here. Um, on my thing it says YT Illustrator, chocoholic and tea lover. So yeah, <laughs> that's you know, tea and chocolate's my thing. So that's why I really had to have my cup of tea. So. Okay, so um, I've been doing steampunk, oh, we think about 2006. We're trying to work out, it's one of those things that a lot of people sort of graduate in steampunk and then realise you've been doing steampunk for a while and then you go, oh, when did that happen? <laughs> and we've sort of been doing it a bit and then some movies came out and things and they said, this is called steampunk. I went, oh, that's what we've been doing. Okay, so this is some of um, the Adelaide people, and in fact, one of them just walked in, he's wearing something different. He's, I haven't got it, but to bring a pointer. He's the second one from the left. Should be able to mouse point, with it? Can I mouse point? I think so, yeah, yeah. Oh, this person here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a few of us, and, um, okay, first of all, I think, Tracy. <laughs> And Anne, who are going to be in do um, Aussie interpreting for us today. I'm also, I'm actually going with the deaf too, so I might go pardon occasionally. So, yeah. And if I stare at you, I'm actually trying to lip read sometimes. So, <laughs> so people look at you go, what are you staring at my lips for? <laughs> okay, this is me here, several sizes ago. And this gentleman here, Pontip, um, and this is a really cool outfit. It's his um, um, robot gentleman. And see, you can get a hold of yourself. We'll talk about that a bit later. Okay, so steampunk is different to everyone. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later too. So what I did yesterday, I'm gonna do it again today, is I'm gonna pick on people. So I'm looking at you, sir. What do you think steampunk is? There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. Mechanical? Yeah. Um, yep. Sci-fi, so that's about H.G. Wills yep. and Jeff and Jeff. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Watch all those movies yeah. and I love Victorian, that old stuff, so it's yeah. bring them both together, really. Pushing that's it, yeah. David? Um, I'm sorry. It's a Victorian period with um, steam, plasma, and more modern technologies um, slightly turned. Yep. And do, do you want to answer anything? Do you have any ideas about steampunk, what steampunk might be? I always thought of it as the fascination with what could be in the future, but looking back into the past. That's a really good one, actually. I'll talk about that in a minute, too. And this gentleman doesn't look like he wants to answer, so that's okay. Unless mm -hmm. you want to, yeah? Oh, no, yeah. Did you have any ideas? No, no, just. Yeah? yeah. Adrian uh, mentioned his yesterday. yesterday. Do you want to, have you got anything different to say? So, second industrial revolution technology. For me, it's really uh, just Victorian sci-fi, mm -hmm. um, being mindful of one's power source, um, but not being um, scared to use things like radium or yep. you know, camera light <laughs> or other things that have kind of fun. So yeah, there's, and, and, and there's so many definitions of steampunk and it actually changes as you go through the world what they, they view steampunk as and it's actually changed over the years as well. So steampunk started as a literary genre so most of you probably have read some of the books I'm going to talk about. So we all know the inspirations, H.G. Wells, so you've got Man the Moon, War of the Worlds, 
Jules Verne, sent to Jenny to send to the Earth. So I'm sure uh, who hasn't read those? <laughs> I was just saying to Adrian, I probably haven't read them for about 30 years. <laughs> so it's a bit scary actually. So it's inspired. So that's that's actually Victorian science fiction. So at one stage people were saying that steampunk was Victorian science fiction, but it's not really because it's our reinterpretation. It's like a retro look back at what was happening with their technology then. But we are using our lens, our, our look at the world, and we look at the world very differently. And Adrian was talking yesterday about whitewashing. You know, at, at the beginning there was a lot of colonialism and stuff like that in some places in the world, particularly in America. If you're a pith helmet, you will get dumped on big time for colonialism. But it means different things in different countries, in England or here. And we've changed the way we do that. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. So, um, uh, the actual name for um, steampunk was only actually invented by K.W. Jetter, and I've got some of his books here, in 1987. Um, what happened was you had, remember cyberpunk? Do you all remember cyberpunk? Yeah. So you had William Gibson, who's a really interesting dude when you meet him. Um, they were writing The Difference Engine, and they were trying to work out, it was different to other things. It was this Victorian science fiction thing, they didn't know what to call it. And so they came up with the name in 87, he says, why don't we call it uh, Steampunk? So you've got K.W. Jetta and James Blaylock and oh, Tim Powers, are the, what they often call the three grandfathers of, of science fiction. So they've written, there's a lot more books they've written, this is a whole series. Um, and they were writing that sort of genre, but they didn't know what to call that sort of genre. Uh, even before that, Michael Moorcock was writing his stuff about Beyond Mars and stuff, and they had a sort of steampunky feel to it. And that was all way earlier. Um, I like to mention my little favourite thing. It, it, that steampunk's been in television and movies longer than we think. Um, does anyone remember Wild Wild West TV series? Not the movie. Yeah? That came on television. Yeah? 17th of September 1965. It's my birthday. <laughs> I like that. Just, it must be destined. I found that out. Went, oh my god, that's the day I was born. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Okay, that's not that's my thought. <laughs> so um, one one I thought was quite nice was retro style speculative fiction influenced by classic science fiction, but seen through the filter of our modern sensibilities. Because even compared to five ten years ago, we think a lot differently. Okay. You've got the steam, which is the Victorian wonder industrial revolution, the way technology is done. And also in amongst that Victorian feel, you've got that exploration and wonder. It's like, whoa, everything's exciting. Okay. The punk part is bucking the system because there was things we didn't like. There was slavery. There was racism. There was um, women couldn't vote and do take jobs and all sorts of things. which like, um, And the punk part of it, is putting that in and twisting it. So in mine, the women are trying to get their, they're trying to do things and, and you'll find that's happening a lot more. Um, you get more people of colour in books now. You get people of fluid gender and, and, and it's all happening now. We'll talk about that a bit more. But um, so the whole thing is steam and punk together. It's not just doing everything from a historical thing. We can say, yes, there was slavery. We really have to admit there was stuff. Not totally ignore it. Initially, they would ignore all the bad things, and that's how the whitewashing thing came around, the colonial thing came around, because they weren't admitting that these things happened. And now these days, they're starting to say, yes, this happened, but it wasn't a good thing. But now we know better, and then they can write stories where characters are sort of trying to break out of that and show. So we, we learn from history, and this is another way of learning from history. Similar thing with science, classic science fiction stories. They would actually use the science fiction to do social um, uh, talks on social and, and, and critiques on the way social so the things were happening in society. Um, did anyone see um, oh, was it Alien Nation? That they used the aliens to talk about racism, and it's it's it's, it's so if we embrace that, we can actually get some really fantastic stories, and it makes you think as well. But also, speak punk is fun. Yeah. Too. It is fun. So yeah. Um, it's alternative history. It's usually set in the 19th century with retro science fiction um, and with steam. But yeah, it's fun. That's why I like it because it's lots of fun. Now, when is steampunk? Now, traditionally, it's Victorian. Okay, that's what most people think of. Um, so Victoria was up, up to when Victoria died, and then you've got uh, Edwardians being a lot more popular. 
Um, even going back to Regency, there's getting starting to get Regency, and I'm actually thinking about doing a Da Vinci one. <laughs> um, it's usually, whoops, ah, that's what changed before, I must have knocked that. Ah. Um, it's usually pre-World War One because the way society thought of things changed after World War One. Not just the diesel, but that way of thinking changed after that as well. Um, it traditionally is British Empire. What is this? It's a pop-up How do I make it go away? Uh, yeah. So here's the computer person. Um, what was it? British Empire, yes. Um, so traditionally it was British Empire. But now you're starting to get a lot more people doing, uh, it's big in Spain and South America and you're actually getting things set in Africa and Asia. It's really great because you're getting all these different voices coming in and it's really quite interesting. And then of course you get, I put down colonial Australia because we were still a colony at that stage and then you went into federation, we'll talk about that because I've done a bit on South Australian history. Um, I actually finally, at the end of this book, finally I get to get it into Australia and the second book I'm going to be writing will have most of it in, in South Australia. Um, there's actually a lot more people starting to write in Australia. So what you've got is quite a few, um, uh, quite a few Australian authors. Um, this one here, Felicity Banks, she also um, has Indigenous characters and characters who um, are bisexual as well. So you're getting a lot more of other things as well. But it's actually, a really, she writes really well and it's a really good story. So um, the, the I remember now it's been a while since I read it. She gets shot in the heart, and her father, who is an inventor, makes her a clockwork heart. And she's got to keep opening it up, feeding it um, fuel all the time. But it's actually illegal, I think. And she, they think she's killed the father, and she gets sent to the colonies. And then, so she gets sent to Victoria during the gold rush. Um, and it's a story about that. And the next one's in Tasmania, so it's actually quite interesting. Uh, you've got Michael Pryor. Uh, there's oh, all these people I can't think of. Oh, I was going to bring all the books and I forgot. Um, I do name them later. There's a whole heap of um, Australian authors, a lot of which are set in Australia now. Um, the publishing industry a while ago would say, oh, it's set in Australia and I want to read it, but actually there actually is more people wanting more stuff set in Australia because they're wanting something different. So that's, that's a bonus for us because we can start writing stories from our point of view as well. There's two um, there's also Shaker. And it's set in an apocalyptic future where they have this big machine and there's the ones that go under like in St. Juni, St. Juni, St. Earth, that buries down into the earth. Um, and it's looking for gold. I think it's in the Klondike area. Um, so, in dystopian. And uh, they had, um, did I bring his? No, I didn't. Um, the movie was out recently. It was a book, it's a series. Yes, thank you. I'm bad with names. Um, and it's in the future. It's gone past. It's been a big week. We assume there's been a big uh, nuclear thing and they've gone back and it's sort of very steampunkish and I know some people didn't like it, I actually liked it, we had a really good, I actually it. had yeah. fun. It yeah. reminded me so much of the 1980s science yeah. fiction movies yeah. that I really loved, so that was fun. So it actually doesn't have to be in England in 19th century, but it's a very common thing, okay? History of steampunk, we've talked a little bit about it. <laughs> um, yeah, Edgar Allan Poe, he actually did a, balloon, a thing called Balloon Hoax. Um, Jules Verne, um, there's actually one in 1892, I forgot the one here, by Henry Livingston Williams, and it was called Airship in Australia, and that was in 1892. So they were right, I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, um, then you've got the 70s, you go through Blaylock and all the others, but yeah, that, we've talked about that. Oh, um, the 90s was when it really came into fashion, you had movies coming in, Wild Wild West. Yeah, I sort of did enjoy that, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but you get a lot of a lot of costuming starting to happen, and now now there's actually we have some of our houses steampunked up, and I wear steampunky clothes half the time. Um, it's actually there are some people that almost immerse themselves into it. It's got a very maker's ethic, very individual. You'll see a lot of people around here, and they've got their own little swing, and that's the great thing about it. It's encouraging that, um, and it's costume and fashion and music and movies and television and books. It's, it's, it's kind of a big monster, it's great. Then you had people like um, Girl Genius, which is very big, they're another one, and it's actually a graphic novel, and it's been going for ages. It's Girl Genius is one that came in, and um, Gal Carriger writes books as well, and Jim Butcher, if you know the Dresden's, Dresden, um, tale, the Dresden, <laughs> Dresden Files, oh, I'm tired. 
Uh, he's actually written a steampunk book recently, which I have, but I haven't read yet. Have you read it? No. I haven't read any of his works yet. I like it. It's one of the very few things I read that are in the eye, that are first person. Because I read about four books before I realised it. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I was supposed to ask you a question before I showed you that. What do you think means steampunk to you? So if you had to pick one thing that meant steampunk or reminded you of steampunk or that you'd say, this is steampunk, what would you think it might be? Goggles. Goggles, yeah. Dirigibles. Dirigibles, yeah, dirigibles. Clocks. Clocks, yeah. Brass and copper. Brass and copper, yeah. yeah. Cogs. Octopuses. <laughs> Cogs, yeah. Cogs. There's, there's so many things. And, and the thing with... It's, it's all, again, comes back to technology and also I think octopus is such a big thing because of um, the 20,000 leagues under the sea and stuff like that. Um, you've got brass accessories, buckles, flying machines, dirigibles are so cool, uh, gadgets and contraptions and parasols and working cane, yeah, we can read all that. Um, so uh, mad scientists are a big thing that end up in a lot of it. Um, famous people often cameo in TV series and in books. Um, Tesla. Yay, Tesla! <laughs> yeah, Tesla. Uh, there's some very interesting fact in that. That's another talk. <laughs> um, uh, Tesla, and um, you've got uh, Edgar Allan Poe turns up a lot, Conan Doyle turns up a lot, Queen Victoria turns up all the time, obviously. Um, and sometimes she's a real person, and sometimes she's mechanical. Um, and the secret societies, and you often get interesting those those political machination stories, which I actually love. So yeah, so you get some really interesting stuff happening there. Then there was a big debate about, okay, is this fantasy or is this fiction? And everyone has it, you can argue both ways. So that's right. So but science fiction deals with stuff that is fact and can happen. And sometimes you might be pro projecting into the future, 20, 30, 100 years, whatever, but it's something that's, that can actually happen, that can work with physics. And of course, fantasy is stuff like magic and stuff that really probably doesn't exist or is very highly unlikely. And there's no physics or or thing that you can prove that. So that's the main difference between them. Now, steampunk's interesting because it can flip down the science fiction end if you've got lots of gadgets. So there's some that are very scientific, and then you've got other ones that go into they put paranormal in it. So they might have um, werewolves or vampires, or they'll have magic. The main thing is, it's so flexible, and you can have a mixture of all of them. It depends on which what you're reading and what you're doing. And so there, there was actually, a couple of years ago, there was this fierce debate, and it was getting quite interesting at one stage about that. Um, um, then they started just saying speculative fiction for the whole lot, so it just makes it interesting. So what, what do you think it is? Usually I put steampunk under science fiction because the the science of the steam and the, that, the, the industrial work yep. is important to the story. Yes. But you're right, there are some where it is much more background mm. or it's window dressing over something that couldn't actually happen. Yep. And that's the thing is, it depends on how it's written and both all, all forms are valid and everything in between. That's, that's why I like steampunk. I actually have a Bachelor of Applied Science, so I come from a scientific background, but at school my subjects were physics, art and English. They were my best subjects. I loved them, I did well in them. And But they wouldn't let you mix art in, I don't know if it happened in here, I was in Queensland at the time of school, but they wouldn't let you mix science and art together, which I got really miffed about. And with um, steampunk, I get to put the science stuff in, mush it in, like in my first book with Jack the Ripper. I found out, does anyone know what an octogram is? Does anyone see Wild Wild West? I know we hate doing this, but you have to be where they got the head cut off and they got the project the picture from the back of the eye. Oh yeah. Victorians actually thought that worked, and I found it in my research that they actually did. They were contemplating doing it on the next Jack the Ripper victim, but the next one they did was at night, and they wouldn't have seen anything, so they didn't do it. So this is the thing: is I work with myself, work with the science that Victorians think would work at the time. And, and so that, well, some of those, you know, from, a, from an optics point of view, sorry, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> so, okay, this is a couple of years ago at a steampunk festival, and you may recognise some people there. There's Anne. Oh, there you are, Anne. Where are you? Oh, there you are. And me, yeah, and you, and, and, and David. Anne, that's her. 
and there's David, that's my hubby there, and there's the other David, and oh yeah, most, most of the people you. being around here, yeah. uh, some of them are off sick today. Um, so you get a whole heap of different sort of costumes as well. Okay, um, when, you go into when you go into state, it's interesting because the costumes change. When you go overseas, the costumes change. Um, because they all tend to focus on something like Wild Wild West, um, it, it's a, um, West, US American Outback West, we call it Outback, is very big over there at the moment. And in New Zealand, they tend to have lots of colours. In England, they have lots of stuff of them. Nordic, uh, if you ever go and have a look at the internet, it's just this amazing array of stuff. I want to go to all these places and see them all because they're so interesting and when they write, they write differently as well. Um, recently, I've got these ones here. So this one was Steampunk World and it had different authors from all over the world. It was one of the ones you got on Kickstarter, yes, thank you. I'm, and I write. <laughs> and then they had another one later, and this one is writers from around the world. And this actually has half of them are in English and half of them in their native language. It's quite interesting. Um, there's a few writers, um, Suna Darcy, I think her name is. She's uh, Indian, lives in England, and she writes um, uh, steampunk based in India. Um, there's just these amazing things you can get if you go looking and, and go beyond the original stuff. Okay, um, there's lots of steampunk vents in Australia. There's so many steampunk vents. Um, you've got, uh, there's a couple now in Tasmania. Um, I've actually put some from other, uh, from inter over the, overseas as well. Um, you've got, I've actually put them in order so you can actually go. This is my wish list <laughs> on if I had enough money to travel around the world, this, <laughs> I could do all those. I've actually, I can tick off Omaru now. Uh, where's that? And that's in May, June here. one here in May June we just went there this year and they and Om Omaru is this town it's not really a city it's this town I think it was 1840s and it, I forget what it was importing but it was big and it was importing all this stuff and it was going to be huge and they actually had concrete chipped over from England to make the biggest longest concrete pier at the time or something and then the export industry <laughs> Fell out thing, and so they didn't become the big city they were planning. But they've got this this couple of streets just full of these old buildings that are gorgeous because they had the money at the time. And they actually run that steampunk festival down this whole road. They block off the road. It's, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Um, they, they had about three thousand people over the weekend. The one oh, we're, 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 I don't know if it'll happen, but we want to go there next year if we can. Is Lincoln Asylum? It's in the UK. They had a hundred thousand people there this year. Oh, wow. uh, it's huge. It's the so Omaru is the longest running and biggest steampunk festival in the Southern Hemisphere. The Lincoln Asylum has been going, I think, one or two years longer than that. It's the largest and longest running steampunk festival in the world. Wow. Next one up um, is Wild Wild West Con in Tucson. It had about five thousand people there last year. Um, We'll talk about that again in a second. Um, then you've got lots of groups as well all over the world. These are just some of the ones that you can get on Facebook. Um, the Tucson Steampunk Society do a book group, a book um, club every month, and they actually do it live on the Facebook. So I actually go and join in on that one. So, and they've had some some very interesting people in there. So if you, I, I know it's very book centered. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, this, but I, I actually do costuming too. I've been doing it for a while, so. Um, but there's a whole heap of things you can get and, and I highly encourage people to go and look at the French and the Spanish and the Nordic and the UK and that have a look on they have websites and everything because it's amazing looking at how different people look at different things. It's, it's really quite amazing. This is the Australian steampunk writers I was telling you about. So Richard Harlan now lives in Wollongong um, and he's written up got the, the, the Michael Pryor lives in Melbourne. Ged Mabry was originally from New Zealand, he now lives in Queensland. He also does children's books and he's just re-released um, his independent Very thing but lives in Sydney, unless he's moved. And same thing, some of these, like Tasmania, US, they sort of live half half. Felicity Banks was the one I was telling you about there. Jacinta Marie is the one I was trying to remember before. Um, so there's a whole heap of names there. Um, 
then um, there's also some comic book writers, Jess Page, she's not here this weekend, and I put myself down there too. So there's a whole, there's lots of Australian writers, people don't realise how many, there's more than that, I couldn't fit them all on. And then you've got steampunk all around the world. Now, there's been recent controversies, we talked a bit about the whitewashing bit. Um, everything goes in stages. In America, it's been used, just in the last couple of, well, the last three to six months, they've been going, oh no, steampunk is dead. And they've been doing all these blog posts about steampunk is dead. And it's interesting, I've been talking to, um, yeah, just, <laughs> um, she's been, uh, I've been talking to people who have been to panels at different um, conventions, uh, in America particularly, and there seems to be this consensus that there's a couple of things. It's mainly America that's saying that steampunk is dead. You'll find it's really big in the Nordic countries and France and Spain and South America. Um, Russia apparently is big. UK, I think it's always going to be big because that's sort of the home of steampunk because everyone thinks the UK, yeah. Um, there was a couple of... America looks at things differently and this is a big generalisation because it's not all of America. They all want to make money out of it and because steampunk is a maker's ethic type thing, individuality, it's, it is hard to make money out of it as in big lots of money. Um, and there was some people that decided, oh, we're going to run a steampunk convention. And of course they didn't know much about steampunk. They didn't ask anyone about steampunk. They just wanted to do the steampunk convention. And it fell flat on its face because they didn't really know what they were doing and they weren't catering to the people who were coming. And then they go, oh, this is, you know, steampunk's dying because we didn't do anything. And of course, but these other ones have been going around forever. are still doing great guns. Um, there was uh, another thing, there was a lady, oh, I've forgotten her name. She wrote the Clockwork Dagger series and she has written in uh, a major character in a second series who's Asian and it's during the San Francisco earthquake, but it also has some magic in there as well. And it sounds, I haven't read it yet, but it sounds very interesting. And because it had changed the genre a bit more and it became popular it was said oh no steampunk's dead she's killed steampunk so she now in america is known as the author who killed steampunk mm -hmm. but she hasn't what it is is i was having a chat to quite a few people in the u.s and apparently the east coast um, are the old guard and they consider themselves the gatekeepers of steampunk and a lot of them are like middle-aged men and then you've got the western part of america who's this is their words, not mine, a bit more hippie and you know, whatever. Then you've got the bit down the middle of Tucson where they'll, anything goes, they don't care what you come along, you can come along as a Klingon if you want to, as long as you try to steampunk it up and have fun, they don't care. And apparently it's the East Coast have been saying it has to be this and everyone else is starting to change. We were talking about before, you're getting writers from different places around the world. You're getting people who are doing, people of colour, Gail Carriger does um, people of colour and people who like boys and girls, or either, or both, or whatever. And then you've got, um, oh, she puts in vampires and werewolves and the whole heap of stuff. And it's morphing, like everything does, you start bringing in these other things, you know, publishers want something new. Or there's new people go, oh, I like that, but I want to say it my way. And there's new voices coming in. And there's a lot of female authors coming in. And a lot of authors of colour coming in. And of course, like everything else, the old guard don't like it, so steampunk is dead apparently, but it's not, it's morphing, it's great. Go and read them. If you don't want to read that, read something else. It's up to you and that's the great thing about it. Um, 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 um. So, oh yeah, there you go. So you can have a little reread really of that while I have a cup of tea. They're non-European, non-white male voices. And it's, it's actually lovely reading books from, written by other people, that's what I mean by voices, is you've got other people reading, uh, writing stuff. And there's different stories coming out and it makes it very interesting. Mm. Oh gosh. And like everything else, it keeps evolving and there's always going to be someone who doesn't want it to evolve. Anyone got any questions or comments on that? You got a comment? No? No, I was just... 
this discussion takes a lot longer than here. I'm talking yeah. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. But and I really enjoy it. Yeah. Don't you enjoy it? Yeah. I think you really enjoy it. I think you enjoy it. <laughs> and that's the thing is, but it, and you have to say, I'm, I, I've been talking to specific people. So this is a, this is a generalisation and everyone's different. And that's why I started at the beginning saying, what do you think steampunk is? Because steampunk means something different to everyone. There are some people who just want a costume and that's fine. There's some people who want to wear the same costume all the time. That's fine. Um, some people who want to go and do things during the day and actually work in action and are people who wear full steampunk every single day. Sometimes. That would be nice. <laughs> but I get up and go, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I've done everything for that one. Yeah, so it's still quite big. In fact, it's getting bigger, I think. It's just changing. Um, probably the biggest thing is place, there's lots of places you can find information on steampunk. Like the internet though, don't believe everything you read. <laughs> um, everything is people's opinions and you will find something that you like. Um, a good one is Steampunk Scholar. He actually does his PhD and Masters and he has written sub on, on the subject of steampunk. So he's got a lot of um, uh, researched articles and stuff like that. Um, Beyond Victoriana does a lot of stuff um, from the Victorian point of view and they'll actually do articles on stuff from Victorian. Um, uh, yeah, have a read. Uh, I'm not sure whether Brass Goggles is around anymore. I looked at that the other day, I couldn't find it. Um, music, don't forget music. Music is cool. Um, there are lots of bands. Um, with steampunk, like, every, like, like everything else in steampunk, is a variety. You can get everything from um, sea shanties to cabaret swing to 1920s type jazz through to almost rock and roll to punk, uh, and I'm talking proper punk from the 70s punk, um, rap, uh, what else? Oh gosh, rock and roll. Heavy metal, oh, everything, and then they mush it all together. And there's some bands that do a bit of everything. Um, I'm quite partial to the Litmus Steampunk band, but I must admit, I did write a song for them, so I'm really partial to them. Yeah. But that was pretty cool. Um, and he wrote a song about me, which was really quite cool. Um, and then there's uh, the, the Cog is Dead, and there's oh, the Giraffe one. Steam Power Giraffe. Steam Power Giraffe, and Steampunk, uh, um, Sideshow Annie, no, yes, yeah. Sideshow Annie is a bunch of Sydney, um, and then there's uh, lots, there's lots, there's places you can go on to in, and actually lists all that sort of stuff. I think uh, one, uh, which one is it, which one, I think Steampunk Wikipedia is the one that actually lists music and books and everything on there. Um, um, Steampunk Magazine um, does little articles from around the world, so they did one on Omaru and they did one on Lincoln, and they have pictures on there, um, yeah, uh, and they're my books, so uh, that actually went a bit quicker than I thought it was going to go. Um, I think I talked about everything I said I was going to talk about, didn't I? Yes. Is there anything you want to ask any questions or talk about? Because, you know, this is what, it's all to talk about Steampunk. Okay, so yep. this the steampunk is a genre. Yep. And recently we Flintlock Fantasy has been yes. codified. Yeah. It's just before that. And then slightly to the side we have Magitech, which yep. is not properly codified yet, yep. but it exists. And so I find it very interesting that things that you have put down as steampunk. I would put in one of those on the stove. Do you, do you know what they've been discussing recently? I've actually heard discussion. That they're actually saying, thank you very much for coming in. Yeah. They're actually saying, let's just put it all together. They're saying, this is this is one of the, the big debates at yeah. the moment about steampunk being dead. Is they're saying, who says it has to be, you know, put the flintlock stuff in. Yeah. If it has vaguely steam and cogs, they don't care. So putting all these things in there, anything like it. But they're basically saying the steampunk, rather than saying do 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 do, if it's similar, just whack it together. And there is, yeah, there's fours and against for that. But yes, there's a big, there is big talk about that. When I started saying, I'm actually, I've got it in my head because I did um, historical reenactment for so long, and I specifically did um, the middle of the 1500s uh, Medici era. I've got a whole bookshelves on it. 
um, I actually wanted to do a Da Vinci steampunk and it's in my head and there might be time travel in there, I don't know, it's just, it's just getting in there and someone goes, oh, but that's cog punk and that's not steampunk. Well, actually, no, if you think about it, if it runs by steam, who's to say it's not steampunk? Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, is, is you can put them in, it, it, it depends on what you put in it. If it's, if it's different technology, then it will separate it slightly. But then you can actually have similar technology put it together. Mm -hmm. And I think genres are very fluid. Even in um, YA, um, in, in young adult and in fantasy and stuff, all these things are fluid. Um, I put in, um, when, when you put the book, I put it into Trove and you put it into Amazon and stuff like that. And then you'll find a year later, the genres have changed and they're calling it something different. So genres are fluid. Um, people say, what do you write? I just write the book and then it's, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, that is a valid point about Flint, that there's been big discussions about that recently. Um, it's actually quite interesting following some of it. And, and you can see the old guard really digging in. And then you can see everyone else going, oh, we don't care, it's just fun. So yeah, so that, that's a good point. What I'm trying to get at is steampunk is interesting and can be anything to almost, almost to anyone. And there's no right or wrong. And, you know, don't listen to the people that say, you can't do this. They get my, that's the punk bit. They, they, they really get my <laughs> Should write a story about them? <laughs> Um, but it's happening in science fiction as well. Um, does anyone follow the Nebula Awards and stuff like that? Does anyone know what the hell the Nebula Awards are? Okay. Um, so you have, um, every year you have a Worldcon, and that goes around the world, science fiction conventions, mostly literary. Um, and actually, oh, this is going to sound so geeky. Part of our honeymoon was at the one that was in Melbourne in 99. <laughs> so that was pretty sad. That's when we met Terry Pratchett and stuff, that's cool. Um, um, and they have, sign, they have science fiction fantasy book awards. And so you put the book in and people will nominate it and they win. And winning a Nebula or a Dron, anyway, if you win one of them, it's really big because if you win a Nebula award and you have that on your book, it's science fiction, it, people go, oh, I'm gonna read that. Um, and for a while it was only being won by white males of middle age and there was this big push and it, it, go on the internet you, you can read all about it there's the sad puppies and the whatever puppies and they have all these different it's like following american and uk and australian politics it's just oh my god <laughs> it's it so um but what's come out of it is there was some um you're getting Voices from females and voices from different ages and older and younger and voices of people with colour. You're getting all this sort of stuff now, it's not just white. Nothing against, I love my white male. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were they were really pushing everyone out and they were they were lobbying and, and working it out so these other people would get nominated and that's that's not on. And that's the thing is steampunk the way I look at it is all inclusive and you know, if someone comes along in a steampunk clown suit, except for the people that freak out about clowns, <laughs> fine. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I think you've covered everything pretty well. <laughs> so, and then you might go, oh yeah, I don't believe that. It's fine. <laughs> That's good too. But yeah, it's just um, a lot of people have only ever seen steampunk here, and it's 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 interesting to look mm -hmm. out beyond South Australia and beyond that. Um, Oh yeah, we talked about South Australian history before, weren't we? Yes. Um, yes, we have some very yeah. That's not actually that's another whole another talk. That one. Yeah, yeah I won't get into it. Look at Australia. Uh, look at South Australian history yeah. before Federation and the way they treated. We still had. We talked about things. There was still horrendous things happening to the Indigenous people, but they could actually own land. Mind you, they had to disconnect themselves from their, their mob, but they could end land, they could vote, they could actually run for parliament. When Federation came in, they weren't allowed to anymore, and that irks me. So I'm, I'm doing research on that at the moment. I'm really, yeah, that's an irky thing. Probably a bit to do with my heritage too. So my dad was um, Indigenous, uh, First Nation Canadian, so I probably have that little thing in my head going, Rrr. so yeah. That's the punk bit we talk about, steampunk. Um, yeah, okay. So. There's my books, there's my reviews, yeah. I've done some short stories as well. Uh, yeah, if you sign up for my newsletter, 
you can get a free ebook collection of short stories. Um, I'm down there. If you want to come down, uh, you can buy books all over the place. They're in the library. If you borrow it from the library, the government pays us like a little tiny bit of money per book, but you don't get paid anything to you earn hundred dollars. So I need about two or three hundred people to borrow my books from the library. <laughs> borrow them several times. It's good. <laughs> And, it, and then on all, for the first five years when a book's out, that's happened. So if you've got a favourite writer, go and borrow their books from the library. It's good. Um, and I wrote a book. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Advertising. Okay. Anything else? Anything I, you don't agree with? Feel no. free. <laughs> it was all good. Thank cool. you. Yeah, but yeah, look out. Have a look at things. Yeah. Experience it. Have fun. Um, it's. This is what I think that... I imagine that a Victorian person with the going exploring and the new scientific things that were happening and the new places being found, I think this is the wonder we can create with yeah. steampunk. And that's, I, get, I know I get overexcited. It's very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> thank you all very thank much for coming. You. I appreciate it. Thank and thank you. you to Tracy and to Anne and to Dave over here. Yes, so this is how you clap. You feel free to clap for me, but this is how you clap. If you want to, you can come up and look at some of these books too, because I've actually got some books that tell you more stuff about Steampunk. Okay. Feel free to come up and have a look. <laughs>